Ever since getting into this hobby, I've heard the hype about Heroes Con, that it's the best Comic Con in the country for comic book lovers. I spent my birthday there this year, and it's the very first time I've attended the event. You're going to want to stick around for the entire video so you see my thoughts, good, bad, otherwise, as well as my full haul that I came home with. Don't want to miss this. So this is what you see when you first walk into Heroes Con is this info booth. And they had, yeah, representatives throughout the day that if you had any questions about what's going on or, yeah, just general questions, you can ask them. Love the music. Thought of that. This guy. And, oh, I missed it. That was the merch booth. So they only had t-shirts, I think. I didn't see anything besides t-shirts, but there was a merch booth just to the right. And that was when you first walked in, and then I went next to the very middle of the convention center, and I did a 360 to kind of show you the size and also kind of the layout of the of the convention center and the con. But I wanted to quickly touch on, I saw my comic shop there, which I do not see them everywhere. If you've checked out, if you haven't, check out my video on the top five places I like to buy my graded comic books because my comic shop is on there. It's a big website that they do auctions and like buy it, a lot of buy it now listings for comics. And yeah, it was pretty cool to see them because I don't see them everywhere. So I'm going to pan around and on the comic shop, my comic shop side of the convention were like all the comic book sellers. And there was just, as if you can see, there was just booth after booth after booth of comic book sellers and dealers. And I have not seen that at a convention before. I would say the majority of, of vendors here were comic book dealers. And that's not common for a lot of comic book conventions, sadly, even though they're called comic book conventions. So Heroes Con was extremely impressive with the amount of comics that they had at this show. And then on the right side, on the opposite side of my comic shop was kind of like Artist Alley, where you have like, you know, people who are artists that are signing books and doing uh, drawings. And they're also selling uh, like crafts that they, not crafts, but they, they sell homemade or, you know, their made items. So if it's like they make their own, you know, keychains or they make their own, like I've seen trading cards before, or, you know, they make their own designs and they turn them into like housewares and other kind of items for you to buy. So Artist Alley and a lot of those non-comic book vendors were on the opposite side of the convention. But if you can see, it goes, it goes, it's a very large convention center. And not only did I see my comic shop, I saw other big auction houses like Hake's Auctions, which I haven't mentioned on the channel before. Hake's Auctions, I spoke with them, and they do auctions like every other month. And they do not just comic books. They do all kinds of different things like, you know, uh, anything, anything collectible, like cards, baseballs, basketballs, you know, all kinds of different stuff. Even like presidential things like old, like, I like Ike, you know, buttons and all kinds of whatever. If you can collect it, they auction it off. And yeah, so every other month they do auctions. I've, I've bid on an uh, item there before, and Avengers won in a 6-0 off-white to white. I didn't win that. So I have tried to buy something from them one time, but I do consider buying from them in the future. And after talking with them, it was very cool. And one of the representatives at the booth who wasn't here at the time, she actually is a writer for Go Collect, which is a subscription service that I uh, subscribe to. They're like a pricing guide, but also they write articles, cool articles about comics and the hobby. So it was really cool to run into them and to talk to them. Comic Link was there. They're like my comic shop. They're another big online auction house slash comic book dealer and i've bought a lot of comics from them and again yeah if you haven't checked out that video i really like comic link i've had a lot of good experiences with them in the past so cool to see them and to talk to those guys and this is another one i haven't talked on the channel before but another one i bought comics from i bought my first appearance of super of uh, super boy it's super boy 68 the first appearance of bizarro um and I got that from Reese's Rare Comics. And Reese's, they have a website where they have lots of comics for sale. I found that they're very, you know, in the general, pretty reasonably priced. A lot of times it is slightly above fair market value, but they let you make an offer. And a lot of times that offer, you can easily get it for fair market value or even a little under. So I have purchased from them before. Super nice guys and great quality books. So if you see, they have a bunch of Golden Age. They've got, you know, detective comics here. They've got even action comics in like the 
here's Action Comics 242, First Bizarro, Action Comics 252, First Supergirl. They've got X-Men number one, you know, first appearance of the X-Men. They've got Neil Adams, you know, Joker cover goodness. They've got Batman, uh, first Raz, Raz al Ghul. They've got first Poison Ivy here. I mean, just lots of great comics. They've even got some old Golden Age, like, you know, horror comics, Catman comics, Captain America, all winners, lots of timely early Marvel stuff. So pretty cool books. Here's a close up of some of their of some of their bigger books, especially Marvel. You got a Fantastic Four number one. That's a that's a big book and even a 2.5. They also have Fantastic Four number five, the first appearance of Doctor Doom. They had Detective Comics up here. I think that was like issue number two. I think they said that was, I'm pretty sure that's issue number two. Anyway, uh, that's a really old, cool book. And then we've got first appearance of Wolverine. That's Hulk 181. We got Spider-Man 4, the first appearance of Sandman. We got uh, Amazing Spider-Man 14, first Green Goblin. We got first Rhino, first Morbius, first John Romita jr right or is that yeah no that is that for i can't make it out from here uh but yeah uh, another key issue in I mean, yeah i'm pretty sure is that first that's first john armita artwork after steve steve ditko left let me know in the comments am i wrong or is that that's not death of the green goblin anyway they've got um they've also got first punisher here they've got first yeah uh, first black cat they've got first uh, Galactus, they've got First Silver Surfer, just lots of huge books at this at this uh, venue, or at this booth. And that was a common theme I saw throughout Heroes Con, was not just the number of vendors here, comic book vendors, but the quality of books was a, very impressive. We got First Vision, we got First Ultron, Avengers 4, that's the first Captain America in the Silver Age. And when he joins the Avengers, we got Giant Size X-Men, the first new X-Men team, second Wolverine. We got first uh, Hawkeye here. Just lots of cool books. I love seeing, and they had nice thing that they had like a wide variety. They got first Gambit. They got first Kitty Pride and Emma Frost. They had all eight, you know, ranges, right? Basically modern all the way back to Golden Age. So super cool. Another massive comic book dealer and website slash auction house was comic connect and they are also one of the places i really love to buy comic books and this was the most impressive booth just from the value standpoint so you're gonna want to watch this because the amount of original art they had was super impressive phenomenal but watch these books i mean these books are astounding okay i mean I've never seen this book in person. This is what started the golden age, the superhero genre. This is Action Comics number one. Number one in the, it's the first appearance of Superman. And what an iconic cover lifting up the car. Like I got to see this in person. I've never, seen this book in person i've only if you seen kung fu panda i've only seen paintings of that painting i've only seen pictures of this picture you know of this of this I've only seen paintings of this painting what a huge massive book to have you know there and to see in person and they've got superman number one sitting right next to it another massive book and then you got another huge issue we've got all-star comics 8 the first wonder woman we've got detective comics classic cover we got detective comics first red hood we've got first blade we've got just massive books we've also got here's the here's the one i bought from reese's rare comics this is the first bizarro this is superboy 68 little jealous because mine's a 6.5 that's a 7.0 but you know hey what, what can you do here's uh first miles morales i mean lots of cool stuff again another raz al ghul but this time you know batman 232 and a 9.8 that's rare to see we also got Green Lantern goodness that starts the Bronze Age. We've got Wonder Woman, her origin in the Silver Age. We got again, first Bizarro, this time though in a 6.5. We got first Supergirl in a 6.5. Showcase 4, first Barry Allen, the book that started the Silver Age of comics. I mean, they've got the first Golden Age book, the first Silver Age book, the first Bronze Age book. I mean, wow. We got uh, Batman 47 here, origin of Batman. 
amazing action comics goodness. And then, are you kidding me? I thought we were done seeing, I mean, one copy of Superman 1. You've got two more. Not only that, you have two copies of Batman 1, first Joker and first Catwoman. Like, they blew it out of the water as far as quality of books are concerned. We got the first cover of Catwoman here. We've got some really amazing uh, horror book as far as Punch Comics 12. That's got to be the best skull cover of all time, right? I mean, that's got to be. We've also got some amazing Archie goodness and Brenda Starr. We've got, again, first Doctor Doom here. we got first Green Hulk. It's Hulk number two. In 9.2 pedigree, off white to white. I mean, that thing's got to be worth money, right? And then this. Two... AF-15s. Two Amazing Fantasy 15s. One in an 8-0. 8-0. <laughs> I mean, wow. I've never seen that high of a grade in person. At these shows, you'll see maybe one or two, and it's like a beat copy. And they only have two copies. They have an 8-0. It's ridiculous. They also had two Amazing Spider-Man number ones. as a 7-0 and a 5-0. They've got two Hulk number ones. Uh, the first appearance of Incredible Hulk. I mean ridiculous they got fantastic four number one first fantastic four and a six five i mean really the book that kicked off marvel comics as we know them journey into mystery 83 first thor and a seven oh i mean not only do they have these books they have them in high grade we got the first nick fury here in an eight five first daredevil in an eight five first avengers in an eight oh first x-men i mean the hits just keep on coming we got first ant-man First Iron Man, Captain America, 100 and a 9-8 pedigree. We got first, or we got Submariner number one and a 9-8. Hashtag 9-9 pre-screen, am I right? <laughs> Send those books in. <laughs> we got a 9-8 uh, first Wolverine, Hulk 181. We also got a sign version. We got Ghost, first Prince of Ghost Rider in a 9-4. We got first Punisher in a 9-8. I mean, this is just phenomenal. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Comic Link, or sorry, Comic Connect, they have fantastic books, high quality books, as shown by what they brought to Heroes Con. And I I yeah, I can't say enough about them. They have amazing, rare, valuable comics. So if you're looking for that, check them out. Shortbox was also there. I haven't talked about Shortbox on my channel before. They have an app. They're the largest app for buying and selling comic books. And they had a booth there. It was super cool. Got to meet and talk with the guys. One of them, um, nice enough to give me something after I you know let them know about my YouTube channel so I'll have to show that share that later but yeah lots of golden age goodness not nearly as big of books as uh, we see at the other at the other booths so far but we do have you know like first uh, green goblin we've got some Dave Stevens we've got giant size X-Men number one that's one of the biggest Bronze Age keys the startling comics has got to be their biggest book I would think at this booth for sure I mean the bender cover and it's in an 8 <laughs> I've never seen that book in that high of a grade. An 8 They had 25 grand on it. <laughs> if, I'd, if you had 25 grand, would you buy that book? I like that book. I love the cover. Would I buy that book? Probably not, just because you know I'm more into the superhero genre of things. But man, still impressed. Still appreciate that book for what it is. They got an X-Men number one. We got Chamber of Chills goodness. You know, my wife's like, you never bring that book home <laughs> we got some cool beyond space adventures we've got some uh cool bronze age horror here and yeah just a good mix of books but yeah not uh nearly as impressive as far as the amount of books that they had and the 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 value of the books but like like to see short box there representing an awesome super cool guys really appreciate them you know hanging out with me talking comics for a while check them out you know, you might find a book that you like on the on the app here right here is uh buzzard brothers comics this is greg he's a really good friend of mine really love buying from him especially when he sells on instagram but i've also bought from him uh directly locally so really cool guy he was uh, actually i tried to film his booth but they were in the middle of a live sale on instagram on elite comics 11 you can actually see ali here in the background streaming their live sale so pretty cool uh, 
yeah, so I, I decided maybe I should try to catch them later, not interrupt their live sale, but Greg was kind enough at least to shoot a wave while I was there the first time. So I came back later on. This is when, you know, I had a lot more time or when they were done with the live stream. So I just had the opportunity to take a look at some of their books, but this time they were dealing with a presser uh, and were doing a, a transaction or looked like they were, so I didn't want to bother them again. But uh, uh, so we didn't get as close as I wanted to, but just wanted to point out some of their books because they're pretty big. We have Chamber of Chills, number 12 here. That's a huge book. You know, the, the goblet with the, you know, the, the, the skeleton hands holding up a goblet. And when you look through the goblet, the woman, the beautiful woman in the background is like half skeleton, half human. Uh, you know, because the goblet's like transforming her. It makes her look like she's, you know, a zombie type. And then we got Showcase number four. Again, first Barry Allen, first uh, Silver Age Flash. We got uh, Amazing Spider-Man 14, first Green Goblin. I spoke with Greg afterward, and he had said that the, he actually had a Showcase 48, the first Silver uh, Showcase 48, Fantastic Four 48, the first Silver Surfer in like a 9-6, in a 9-6, and he traded that in another book for the Showcase. So yeah, he had brought some awesome big books to the show. And then uh, Johnny right here, he's with Cash Comics. That's what the, the Buzzard Brothers, they, they, and then here's Chad who helps out here. The three of them, awesome guys. And yeah, Johnny also had some great books as well. You got this in Classic Adventure Comics, very rare issue here, Golden Age. We got Seven Seas, we've got Shield Wizard, so again, a lot of Golden Age, Captain America, Submariner, Mystic. We even got Mad number one, so Mad Magazine number one, really cool book. So they had a lot of Golden Age goodness, and that was uh, a thing that I was also very impressed with at Heroes Con was the amount of Golden Age. So the number of vendors there, the amount of Golden Age they had, and the quality of Golden Age that they had blew my mind. And then it turns out that the person that they were doing a transaction with, I'm going to shout out real quick on, my, on this channel, super cool guy, Barry. He actually no, recognized me at the show and said, hey, Momo Ono collects. And I was like, yeah, how are you doing? And he, he approached me and amazing guy. He's been doing comic pressing for over a decade now, a long time. And he was just, you know, super amazing. Wanted to talk all about the, the channel and his business and how maybe we could partner in the future and maybe I could send him some books and he could earn his way on to maybe doing a, a video in the future. And anyway, just, and it wasn't just about that, right? But I mean, just amazing guy. I really appreciated him coming up to me and introducing himself and talking about comics, right? The hobby that we love. So shout out to Barry. If you want to check him out, make sure to go to Comic Presser. So that's just Comic Presser. Uh, check out Barry. He's pretty cool. Uh, and then Here's that chamber I was talking about. It was a 6-5. Six, 6-5. Five. Six, five. You do not see that book often. In high, I've seen it in person before. Never in a 6-5. It's always like a beat up, like a 1-0 or something. A 6-5. Fantastic book. Here's another seller that I've seen on Elite Comics 11's live sales. And this is Ted from in these Super World Comics. And so I met him, I never met him before, but I was like, hey, I recognize you. You've been on Instagram with Elite Comics 11 doing live sales. He's like, oh, de definitely, yeah, I have been. And I was like, I haven't bought anything from you before, but I'd love to check out your booth. And if you don't mind, I'd love to you know, film. And he was obviously more than happy to do that, which was amazing. But we got to talk comics for a, a long time and like the greatest finds that he's had over the years, which was super cool. But uh, a book that I even looked at when I was in his booth was the Sensation Comics 68 here. This is the first uh, Paula Brooks or the first Huntress from the Golden Age. And if you haven't looked this book up as far as the cover, I think it's fantastic. One of the great uh, keys in the Sensation Comics run, in my opinion, especially because of the cover. So look at that cover. Uh, it's first like it's I refer to it as the first Hydra cover. Let me know if you can spot why I call it the first Hydra cover. Let me know in the, down in the comments if you can see that. But lots of raws on this in, in this. So that was great that the vendors had a, not only graded books, but a lot of them brought raw books as well. You see it and from all the ages, right? We got Golden Age, all kinds of superhero. We got Bronze Age here with Punisher. We've got Silver Age with a bunch of first Poison Ivies. 
I mean, lots of great books across the board and different genres too, anywhere from superhero to horror to, you know, sci-fi, all that stuff. And then, yeah, we got first Catwoman cover here, a lot of detective and we got crime books. I just wanted to show the variety. He's got Planet Comics, Captain uh, Marvel, Catman, all kinds of just, just great books. There's First Brother Voodoo. And then I was like, Ted, what are you doing? On the very bottom row, on the right side of his booth, very bottom row, that you couldn't even really see if you were standing in his booth, he had a small row of these only slab books that he had on the wall. And on the, not only on the bottom right corner, the very bottom right book, the very bottom right book is X-Men number one, first appearance of X-Men in a 5-0 white pages. <laughs> like, did you not want to sell this book, Ted? No, I'm just giving him a hard time. But I was like, why are you hiding it away, Ted? This is a phenomenal book. And the color strike, I don't know if it's going to show up super well, but the, this book, The Color Strike, is very more so than I, I think any other book. I mean, when you think Color Strike variation, you think X-Men number one, at least I do. And this book, very dark greens, very dark reds. So it was a great color strike. I don't know what it's doing on the bottom right of, his, <laughs> right of his booth, but here's first Wasp, first Prince of Wasp, Tales of Astonish 44, and it's 6.5. That was a great book as well. But yeah, why would you hide your slabs, but especially your X-Men number one in your bottom right corner of your booth? I don't know. Uh, I did want to shout out Bedrock City Comics. Uh, super great vendor. I had never worked with them before, never heard of them before, and man, did they have some phenomenal books. We've got, you know, First Kingpin, ASM 50. We've got First Green Goblin. We've got First Lizard. We've got First Doc Ock. We've got First Vulture. We've got First, you know, ASM, or not ASM 1, Amazing Fantasy 15, First Spider-Man. I mean, we've got just basically the Rose Gallery here and his first appearance, which was phenomenal. We've even got First Sinister Six here, as well as Venom. You know, he had lots of great books. If you see, he's got a couple Hulk number ones. He's got Fantastic Four number one, Daredevil number one, Avengers four. He's got First Doctor Doom, a couple a couple copies of that. First Journey, or first Journey of Mystery 83, he's got a couple first appearances of Thor. But that's not even the best part. You go over here, and he's got Detective Comics 38. He's got Detective Comics 38. That's the first Robin. I was like, what? And it was like a, I think it was an 8-0. It was a blue label, like 8-0. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? I've never even seen this book in person. And I was like, it's just sitting there. Man, super impressive. <laughs> I thought that, you know, you do not see that book every day. First Robin. And then I was like, oh man, that's a great book. And then I see right here, Action Comics 23. First Lex Luthor. First Daily Planet. In a 4-0 off-white to white pages. And then I see a Batman 16. First Alfred in a four or five. And then I see Batman 47, first origin of that. I mean, it just is like, what the heck? Like, what the heck? He's got first Doctor Strange down here. He's got first uh, Ra's al Ghul. He's got first Poison Ivy. He's got first Black Manta. He's got, you know, first Barbara Gordon. He's got all this goodness. I was just, first Vicky Vale. He's just, I mean, but man, was I impressed by that Detective Comics 38. I mean, I don't know that I'll ever see that book in person for years, because I've never seen it before. And he's got TMNT stuff up here, which I thought was cool, and Raphael number one. So TMNT number one, Raphael number one, and y Usagi, and Dragon Ball, and uh, even Batman Adventures 12, so first Harley Quinn, and he's got Miles Morales, first Miles Morales here. Ultimate Fallout number four. So he had a great variety of books. And then I just wanted to show, you know, these are all the books that I went through to try to find some raw books I was looking for. But I just want to show like the amount of books, even just at one booth that they had. Just short box after short box after short box. 
and it was just fantastic to just you know to spend the time going through diving for great you know the walls were phenomenal yes you know action comics one detective comics 38 i mean just uh, af-15s i i i would say that i saw at least a, like 15 af-15s i mean it was just phenomenal but diving into the book into the into the into the short boxes looking for just gold it was that was great as well so it's not just about the wall books this was another vendor though i've never seen before never done business with before dying breed collectors and i ended up picking up some books from him that i'll show later so make sure to stick around to the end to see that but lots of lots of newer books so i would say copper and modern age mainly but just want to show there was if you are I mean, did they have a lot of ton of Golden Age books? Absolutely, they had a ton of Golden Age books. But not, if you were a Golden Age collector, or uh, if you were a modern or copper collector, it, you know, it wasn't, there was stuff for you too. So I just wanted to show that there was a variety across the board. And the cool thing is, is he had like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z treasuries. Well, I say treasuries, but like compilation, like reprints where you had the volumes of like, the Saiyan Saga, or the Frieza Saga, or, you know, the Cell Saga. So I thought that was pretty cool, because I'd never seen those before. And we ended up getting talking about Dragon Ball Z a ton. We talked all at length about Dragon Ball Z, because he's a big fan, as well as I am. So, yeah, super cool to see that, something I'd never seen before. And then, yeah, just wide variety of offerings here. And then again, lots of... of raw books bins that you could go through but his wall books were uh i think nice to see that we had a variety of different vendors here as far as what kind of ages of books so that was something that really stuck out to me at this vendor is he really focused on like the modern and the copper age which was which was nice to see because we've got you know like first carnage up here with asm 361 and we've got you know the second printing which is that foil printing which was cool and we've also got like uh, first, what is that? First Venom cover, right? Full, first full Venom cover. We've also got first Venom appearance on cover, with, but it's just like a little stamp, right? And then we've got, you know, X-Men number one here, which I think, you know, Magneto is the best version of that cover. But yeah, wide variety, of, but lots of newer stuff, which I appreciate. And then here's a, I just, I, I didn't want to just show comics, even though that was the, you know, that was the reason I went to Heroes Con. As I've heard, you, if you love comics, you got to go to Heroes Con. It's the best comic con for comic book lovers and to pick up comic books. So yeah, I, I definitely, that was by far the number one reason I wanted to go. But I did the main hall, which was like a big rectangle. It wasn't just a rectangle. It was, I should say, it was like a, it was like an L. So if you think of the convention as an L, where... You know let's well let's say it's this so you walk in from this from from this way and i took that panoramic middle from the middle of the convention like right here to look around well there was also a, a section over on the well it actually went that way but so i should i should guess i should so you can <laughs> you like my hand <laughs> my hand signals are they confusing you they're confusing me too <laughs> so you went in this way to the convention center and uh yeah the, I did a I did a video right here to look around the whole the whole thing, but that was just this strip of the convention center, the main building. And then you, if you walk to the very end, there was another small section of the convention center where at the very end there was like restrooms and where the where the concession stands were. But this little section right here, this little section, they had like non well they had a couple comics, but it was mainly like non comic book stuff. Like I would say. I use the term trinkets, but that's not, it's collectibles. So they had like, you know, lounge flies, they had Funkos, they had all kinds of different, you know, collectibles in there that were not necessarily comics. So I, I didn't film a lot of that, but I did film the one booth that I did pick up some stuff from. And that was uh, this, what was it? I gotta go back, I forgot the name. Amazing Heroes. So Amazing Heroes, couple of guys, super cool. And they were selling these like custom Lego mini. Well, I say Lego, but they were, you know, they're not officially licensed Lego. But they had so much cool stuff. So uh, they had like, I don't know if you can tell from here, 
This is a Pokeball and Pikachu, so it's Ash Ketchum. So they had like a bunch of Ash, Ash Ketchum, like Pokemon stuff. They had like, you name it, you could, I mean, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. So they had like Ghostbusters all up here. They've got, you know, uh, what else do they have here? They've got Mario, Yoshi, here's Mario. They've got Toad, they've got, you know, Princess Peach, Bowser, Wario. They've got all Zelda and Link here. They, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Minecraft, they have Sonic the Hedgehog and Knuckles and Tails and all that stuff. I mean, Rick and Morty, you can see right here as well. So, I mean, what? They, they covered like every IP you could possibly imagine. They had tons of superhero stuff. So they got the Batman universe, they got Harley Quinn, Batman, Joker, you know, all the villains. I mean, super cool to see. Uh, there's Superman, you know, Supergirl, all that cool stuff down here, Wonder Woman. Flash, so basically DC was down here. You see the Flash here, Green Arrow. Um, yeah, Wonder Woman, I think, right, yeah, right there. Um, anyway, just super cool to see. And this thing was not small booth. It like wrapped around. So that was one side. Here's the other side, and it was Star Wars galore. So <laughs> I don't think I've seen this many Star Wars figures in it before in my life. But it's cool Mandalorian figures, tons of Mandalorian uh, stuff. Boba Fett, I thought pretty cool there. We got uh, Grogu over here, so cool to see. Ashoka, I mean, you name it, they had it. Luke, Leia, Han, they had C-3PO and R2-D2, all that stuff. We got to like R Ronald McDonald, <laughs> you know, right next, pretty much right next to Captain America. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought that was great product placement, I just gotta say. <laughs> Because nothing screams America more than Captain America and McDonald's. <laughs> but they got they got the Disney characters here. So they got like Minnie Mouse. I actually picked up this Minnie Mouse for one of my daughters. I got a figure for each of my daughters. So I got a Minnie Mouse. I also, um, they had, you know, Scrooge McDuck, Daisy, they had Mickey, obviously. And they, they didn't just have one character. They would have multiple versions of the character. So you got like Steamboat Willie, you know, versus a regular Mickey. They've got Goofy, Stitch. They've also got Pixar stuff, so they had, you know, Toy Story with Woody with a little Forky. I almost bought that. And Buzz Lightyear, which I almost bought too. Jesse, Bullseye, we got the Aliens, Bo Peep. Uh, but I also bought this Winnie the Pooh from my, one of my other daughters. And then we got Tigger and Rabbit and Pooh and Eeyore and all that good stuff. And then we came to, I thought, the most picked over section, which was the Disney Princess section. So you got like Anna, Elsa, uh, Mulan, Moana, you got even the villains like Ursula, Maleficent. We had the fairy godmother, but yeah, that was pretty picked over. And then came uh, the Dragon Ball Z section, which was pretty sizable. So you had like Brawly Trunks, and you see you have multiple, you have Future Trunks and Super Saiyan Trunks and like regular Trunks and, you know. And then we got Frieza, Majin Buu, Beerus, Jiren, Master Roshi, all the Gokus and all kinds of Vegito and you, I think they even had like Kefla and stuff from Dragon Ball Super. Uh, they just had all the anime type stuff that you can think of was here. Here's more Dragon Ball Z characters, the androids and stuff. So just super cool booth. I want to shout out them because, yeah, they had by far some of the coolest non-comic book merch that, that I saw there. And then I also wanted to touch on, I didn't go here, go to Heroes to... Uh, do anything as far as autographing because as you know, I'm done with CGC So I'm not submitting anything with them anymore uh, and But they did have artists and, there which was really awesome I, I since I didn't I didn't do any of that I just went after it was all over so this was as they were closing up for the night But I just wanted to showcase that they did have some pretty huge, you know cool signings available if you wanted to, to do that So like John Romita jr. Was here Chris Claremont was here so you could see he actually was like really, you know, oh, we're back at the beginning. But you could see like he had, you know, he had done a lot of signings for the day. <laughs> Lots of pens there. But yeah, stick around. I'll be right back and share my final thoughts. So what I think of Heroes Con, did it live up to the hype? 100% yes. This is by far the best comic book convention I've ever been to. Hands down by far. And I'm going to give you... 
tons of reasons why I think it's the best convention. Number one is because the amount of comic books that were there was mind-blowing. I mean, just the vast majority of conventions that I've been to, and I, I, that by, me, by vast majority I mean every single one, it seems like they're collectibles conventions, but a.k.a. like Funko Pop conventions, where comic books make up like, you know, a small minority of the vendors that are at these cons. Not so Heroes Con. It was like flipped, where the vast majority of vendors there were comic book dealers, and that was just phenomenal to see. So number one was the sheer amount of comic books. Number two was the quality of comic books. I I don't think I have to say any more than the video, because the video spoke for itself, but I just saw a small fraction, or I just showed you a small fraction of the quality of books that were there. Does it get better than Action Comics number one? <laughs> I don't think so. But Golden Age... Just the amount of Golden Age there, the quality of Golden Age. Silver Age grails everywhere. Bronze Age, Copper Age, Modern. I mean, it was all there. It was phenomenal. Just phenomenal. So that was the second is the, is the quality of books. Third was the pricing. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that I finally went to a convention that's not pricing all their books like it was 2021, the peak of the comic boom. Like... That was such a welcoming surprise, is prices were very reasonable, much more in line with fair market value. Did you have people overpriced, you know, and said, sure, you know, but not, not two, three, in the most instances, you know, two, three, even four, five times market value. You know, maybe it was some of the worst offenders were maybe like 50%, I don't know, you know way better pricing just way way better pricing so much closer to fair market value and what you know the prices are t in today's market so thank you vendors thank you dealers for you know actually bringing us the fire and bringing us to uh, to us in an affordable price so really appreciate that but uh number four to me was like the convenience of the convention i got to park like literally across the street the convention parking super easy, you know, and yeah, very convenient. Got in, got in line, got my my badge, or did I? I'll talk about that in a second, you know, and got in line. So very, and the venue itself easily laid out, you know, like I said, it was like a big L. But even walking in before you got into the, the hall, the convention center itself was not overwhelming. It was not you know, like a maze or a labyrinth. So I thought it was very easily accessible, really nice. And unlike, for example, I went to, uh, like, well, I wasn't at MomoCon, but I was right next to MomoCon at a Lorcana event. And that was just, like, bonkers. It took, like, an hour and a half to get out of downtown Atlanta. And it was just, or, like, MegaCon, where you're shoulder to shoulder with people. So, like, because there were, there were, it was not crowded. I was there on a Friday on my birthday. And it was not crowded. And yeah, I really appreciated that aspect of it for sure. It was just the convenience aspect and being able to have time to see everything and do everything that you wanted to do. But I saved the best for last. And it may sound corny and, you know, cliche, but it's true. 100% the best thing about this convention were the people. Not just the dealers who were phenomenal across the board, which was great because so many times I go to these conventions and, you know, this is the customer service from the dealer. And there's no pricing and there's, you know, or if there are pricing, it's a thousand times more. And if you want anything, you know, you're gr greeted with this. Where here it was, hey, how are you doing? Welcome to the booth. So glad to see you. You know, and that was before I went around before I was even filming. And this is the reception that I got. So just phenomenal. But not only the dealers, but the other community members, you know, uh, Ali from Elite Comics 11, I thought, just phenomenal. Thank you so much for making it such a memorable day. Like, seriously, it was great to meet you finally in person. It was great to meet Kyle from Kyle's Comics. You know, great time talking with him about comic books and the different conventions. Uh, who else did I meet? I met Ali from Excelsior Slabs. I met uh, Jeff from Undergraded Comics. I saw Ken from Tasty Cat Comics. I met, uh, who else did I meet? I mean, I met so many people. I saw so many people. Uh, Paulo from from uh, Coast Mainline on Instagram. Like, I met who else did I meet? I met Greg from uh, Lithograph Comics. I mean, I just met so many people, 
and put faces to names with so many people. And it was that made all the difference in the world. Cause at every other comic book convention, I've like had to bring my friends or I had to like bring the community with me. I feel like, cause otherwise I feel like I'm a lone wolf just going out and you know, just by myself, no interaction with other people, with other community members where here it was like, everyone was family. It literally felt like we'd known each other forever you know, and we've been friends forever. And we just think that connection and that community and the culture and the, it was, it was, I would return year after year after year after year after year after year just for that. And not, you know, not to mention all those other things that I talked about. So this, did it live up to the hype? Yes. Is it the best comic book convention I've ever been to? By far. So I would recommend Heroes Con to every single human being on planet Earth. So... Can't say enough about it. Amazing, 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 amazing convention. As far as cons for the show, I really have only two because overall the con was amazing. I loved Heroes Con. But uh, there were a couple things that could be improved on. Number one to me that was the biggest, and that was the event staff. Or the I should say the convention center staff, not the event staff. So it wasn't the people working Heroes Con. It was the people who worked at the convention center itself. And I just found them to be kind of rude, abrupt, and not very knowledgeable. So, for example, when I showed up to pick up my badge uh, like an hour before the show started because I just wanted extra time to get acclimated as far as filling up my water bottle, picking up my badge, getting in line, all that stuff. Well, the, the line was already starting to fill up. So I after I picked up my badge, I tried to fill up my water bottle. And the water fountains, the water fountains that were right next to the badge pickup were out of service. So I asked like three different convention center staff members thinking, hey, you work at the building, you would probably know where like a drinking fountain or an operational like water refill, water bottle refill station would be. Not a single one of them knew. And uh, two of the three were not uh, very friendly either. And they basically, at the end of the day, they recommended I just wander around the convention center trying to find one. So <laughs> instead of doing that, because it was a large convention center, had already been down a couple of hallways, with no success i decided to figure that out later so i got went to go in to get in line and the line was already starting to go out the door and so people started snaking back in the building to just you know save space but also it was like 93 degrees out with a, a billion percent humidity so people didn't want to be standing outside obviously you know understandably but the event staff like decided it was okay to like only snake halfway back for the line. And then they started directing everyone else, even though there was plenty of room, in my opinion, they started directing everyone else to start a new line outside on both ends or on both sides of the entrance. And I just didn't think that was appropriate. People came in after, I mean, because we waited like 45 minutes, uh, peop, you know, from the time I got in line and that, that's when they right after me they started ushering people outside so people waited outside for like 45 minutes in the heat waiting to get in and by the time some people got in I mean they were drenched in sweat because it was not cool outside and there's no relief right outside because it's just concrete everywhere so I thought that could be handled a lot better than it was I also experienced when I went to buy my food there was not really a great system in place there was it wasn't super busy, but there were enough people there that uh, they were backed up on the chicken tenders, which most people were getting because it was the best value in my opinion. But they said, "Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a while. Do you mind, you know, waiting?" And I was like, "Oh no, not at all." So I put my order in, thinking I would get like a, you know, my receipt would have a ticket number that they would call or something. Nope. Uh, so I asked, and they're like, "Oh yeah, sorry, we don't have ticket numbers." And so I said, "That's kind of strange." Well, I guess I'll. You know, and she, I didn't want to intrude because there's other people in line. So I just went to the restroom, came back and waited by the pickup area. And it was not well organized. Basically, the chicken tenders were just coming out, you know, on the fly. And whoever, whatever cashier wasn't busy helping somebody was grabbing chicken tenders and giving them to whoever they checked out. Not whoever uh, had bought them first and not, and obviously not anyone they hadn't you know, checked out or taken their order. So for example, my, the, the line for my cashier, 
she was still taking orders. So all the chicken strips that were coming out were all going to the one cashier that was available that she was just like giving them all out, even though a lot of those people had ordered after that after I had. So that was kind of, you know, a bummer. Obviously, I got my chicken strips eventually, but I just thought that could have been handled a lot better uh, for sure. And then the other, the other thing was that at one point I needed to pack my gear up and I just needed a place to sit down. And there's no seating in the convention center, really. And it's all hallways with people walking up and down. So I stepped outside of the, of the, of the hall where the con actually was into the rest of the convention center building and where it wasn't busy and i found a little like wall that was between like two restrooms and i sat down on against the wall and was just putting my gear away and a woman the one of the event or not the event i keep saying event but one of the convention center staff members came over and said oh you can't sit there and i said excuse me oh well, well they don't want you sitting there and i'm like who's who's this nebulous they well no you're not you're not allowed to sit there and i was like well I, ma'am i'm I'm just putting stuff in my bag and then I'm going back in. I just needed a second. I didn't want to sit down and block it. Oh, no, 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 you, you can't be here. You can't sit there. I said, I had to say like two or three times, I'll just be a second. I'm not staying here. I'm not camping out here. Plus, again, there's no one There's no one around. Everyone's inside the, the hall. And I'm just trying to be polite and, you know, make it convenient for people so I'm not like dropping down in the middle of aisles where you know, people are trying to walk through and blocking people. I went to a place where there's n not many people around and I'm not interfering with anybody. And she was just very rude, very abrupt. And I just was, that left a bad taste in my mouth. So the event center staff uh, or the, the convention center staff left a lot to be desired. That'd be my biggest complaint. The second uh, was more of a minor issue. Uh, something though that I think that they could have easily rectified. And that was, I went on Friday because uh, that was my birthday and I had a birthday party plan for Saturday my wife did so I didn't have uh, the ability to go on Saturday or Sunday so I just bought the day pass for Friday and I thought just like any other I almost every convention I've bought a pass at I've always bought a day pass and I always get a lanyard you know like Megacon uh, Lexington Comic Con Fanboy Expo Vancouver you know any con I've ever been to Cal was it Cal Comic Con or WonderCon WonderCon anyway I get a day pass almost every time and I get a lanyard. Well, I got a day pass this time and did I get a lanyard? No, I got a, you know, like a little carnival, you know, wristband like they give to children that says Heroes Con June 14th, 2024, Friday. And it wasn't just me. It was anyone who had a day pass was getting these wristbands and were not getting a lanyard. I only saw the three day and above like passes were getting a lanyard. And come on, Heroes Con, it can't be expensive to do lanyards. And that's a memento, you know, that people want to keep as a memory for the con. And that's part of the reason I bought the t-shirt is I wanted a memory from, from the con. Usually I keep the lanyard. Could not do that this time. So I think Heroes Con could definitely do better in giving everyone a lanyard, regardless of how many days they bought their pass for. Now let's get to what did I pick up? What are my hauls? So because I thought so highly of this convention, I had to pick up a t-shirt. So I got an official Heroes Con t-shirt. So pretty darn cool, you know, 2024. And that was the other cool thing is you could tell that th this con had a huge, massive loyal following because I've never seen the the number of people wearing that Comic-Con's like past t-shirts because uh, like dozens of people wearing, you know, in not just recent ones, but like, 1980 or 1990 you know i don't know how far back it goes but you saw sh people with shirts from heroes con from like decades past and that was just cool to see so i'm assuming those people just go back year after year and just are dedicated loyal following that was super cool i want to be a member so i got that shirt i mentioned that short box those guys gave me something uh for talking with them and i really appreciate that and that is a short box t-shirt oh I got it back. Did I have it? No. Yeah. Short box. They gave me not just the regular short box t shirt, but they gave me the exclusive short box live 2024 t-shirt. So that's the front. Here's the back. So yeah, super cool t-shirt. Thanks guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, Kevin, I'm pretty sure it was Kevin. I'm so bad with names. Kevin, uh, I'm pretty sure is the one from short box that gave this to me. Thanks so much, Kevin. And yeah, so those were some of the non-comic book things. I also picked up 
I had to. I had to. I'm the biggest Dragon Ball Z fan on planet Earth. I had to pick up some of those custom, like, miniatures. Here's Goku with the Dragon Ball. It, the thing that blows my mind, it's the one-star ball. It's not the four-star! If you're going to go into that much detail, at least give him the four-star ball. No, I, I'm giving him a hard time, but I had to get Goku. I got, like, the whole gang. I got, like, nine of these things for me. I got Gohan in his Super Saiyan form, like when he destroyed Cell. Can I, can the camera... I got Vegeta in his Super Saiyan form, like when they're fighting Cell. He, they had like an original Vegeta, like from the Saiyan saga, like when he's the villain and he's got the big Saiyan armor, but he looked too chunky. He was a he was a fat boy, so uh, I didn't get that one. I got the Super Saiyan. I also got the the regular Trunks. So yeah, that's super cool, and his sword. <laughs> He, I thought at first that it was, you know, it didn't actually, you know, it wasn't interactive. But yeah, his sword comes out of its sheath in the back. So pretty cool. But I got trunks there. Can't, can, you know, Z warriors can't get, be, be completed without the bald guy, Krillin. I've met Sonny Strait on a couple of different occasions, the voice actor for the character. And such a cool guy. And Krillin's one of my favorites. Turtle Hermit symbol on the back there. I also got... My favorite character of all time, and I don't, if you don't agree with me, you're wrong, is Piccolo. And not only does he have a Dragon Ball, he's got like his special beam cannon, like energy shot. And he's got his, you know, training weight helmet and his cape on. So yeah, Piccolo the Namek. I'm going to get, I'm too close. I want to get it to focus. Focus camera. You can do it. There, we, is that better? I don't know if that's, I don't think that's better. Is that better? I think that's better. Anyway, Piccolo. Super cool. We also got... I think you saw it in the video. I mean... <laughs> I insta-bought this. I'm like, seriously? Master Roshi with a staff, with a Dragon Ball, with his little hermit shell, her turtle hermit shell on the back? I mean, are you serious? Like, the detail on these is, was phenomenal. And I unknow, didn't know this... But I actually got a set of Dragon Balls. Seven of the characters are holding Dragon Balls. That was not on purpose. But do I love the fact that that happened? Absolutely. <laughs> we got Bulma, which I love because she's got like a Dragon Radar Scouter thing. Well, it's, it's a Dragon Radar, but it doesn't look like the Dragon Radar, but it's supposed to be the Dragon Radar. And she's got a Dragon Ball. And I've met Tiffany Vollmer, the original voice actress for Bulma. So that's super special figure for me, too. It was so hard to pick out which figures to get because they had so many, but Dragon Ball Z is my favorite anime of all time. I've even got uh, first appearance of Goku in a Shonen Jump manga. Here's Frieza to me. I I bought all the Z Warriors I could I could get. They didn't have Tien or Yamcha or Chaozu. Come on, guys. You really need to big, make those characters over like Kefla and rando characters like that. Well, not random, but you know what I mean. Like Yamcha, Tien, Chaozu, those are classic going all the way back to the original. But um, Frieza's got his little like Destructo disc plus his little like, you know, his finger laser beam attack. I think that's what that is. But the Destructo disc, classic, you know, iconic energy attack from Frieza. And arguably the best, greatest Dragon Ball Z villain of all time. Um... You know, he's the one who forces Goku to go Super Saiyan for the very first time. But it's a toss-up to me between him and Cell. Cell and Frieza. I liked Cell as a villain better than Fre No, I can't say that. I can't. They're both, I, I, they're both phenomenal and for their own different reasons. Cell was the perfect enemy, the perfect fighting machine, you know, as far as how he was matched up against and the different stages and, you know, absorbing the androids, that whole plot line. But he, for some reason, he's got a Dragon Ball and he's got a, he's got an energy attack. I don't know which energy attack he's supposed to have because he copies any energy attack that his opponents can do or he, he doesn't copy. It's part of his DNA. So he can do all the, all the attacks that, you know, the DNA from fighters from the show. So I don't know what energy check he's doing, but 
Frieza and Cell. Best Dragon Ball villains, hands down. They had Majin Buu. I was like, never. <laughs> These two are just iconic. Iconic. You, you know, he's the perfect fighting machine. You know, so he's the strongest villain by far that Goku, well, maybe Buu is technically, but not really, you know, because he's not handcrafted like this to beat him. Like, Cell was just the perfect villain, but Frieza was just, you, you hated him. You hated him. So the character development because of how denigrating he was and how he, you know, destroyed planet Vegeta and how superior he thought he was and, you know... He had different forms too. I, I, they're both just the best. So those are the non, non comic book related buys that I got. So thanks for sticking around, because I'm gonna start showing the comic book related stuff I got. And I mentioned those Dragon Ball like treasury or reprints. I actually picked up a bunch of them. I almost bought them out. So I got Dragon Ball number one. So these are. Basically, treasury versions or like uh, compilation books for the original Shonen Jump manga or Shonen Jump magazine, whatever you want to call it. I call it the manga, but the show, the original Shonen Jump story. So like the original manga, they they're thick books, right? They're they're not there. There's a lot of book, a lot of stories that would be in those mangas. It wasn't just like Dragon Ball. It would. Dragon Ball would be like one story in a collection of different stories in the manga. Where, so you'd have to buy like week after week, you know, the, a new whole manga to get a little bit more of the story. So they compiled the stories into these basically treasuries um, or collections, if you will. And this, this is a, a volumes one through three, which I don't know how. He's, I think uh, the seller mentioned that there's like four or five of these, you know, collection books, but I got, he only had the fir very first one, so I bought it. So basically this is the first, yeah, the first collection of Dragon Ball stories, which if you're a fan of the show, I'm sure it goes through like maybe, I don't know, maybe the first world tournament, who knows, or just through training maybe, I don't know, we'll have to read it, it'll be super cool, I'm really excited to read it because, yeah, I actually... I love the, my first appearance of Goku, but I and I love the show, obviously. I'm a huge Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z fan, but I want to read all the stories because I've never done that. So, super cool that I got this, and I just thought this is, it looks awesome too, and it was very affordable. I bought the first five Dragon Ball Z volumes as well. So, the first Dragon Ball, and then the five first Dragon Ball Z, and I just think these are so super cool. Uh, yeah, just how cool are the, is the cover? I mean, who doesn't love Goku? I mean, classic Goku. I mean, yeah, take that all day. But so you saw that in the video on the table. So this is the very first volume. He had three copies of that. He only had one copy of all the other ones. So, uh, I bought the, the only Dragon Ball he had and then the first five Dragon Ball Z. He said that... There, he didn't have the full set of Dragon Ball Z either. I think he said there were four more of those, so there were like nine total. So I, I bought I bought five Dragon Ball Z, one Dragon Ball, and I think there's nine Dragon Ball Z and four Dragon Ball. So I bought, what, what is that, six out of the 13? So I have roughly half of the volumes, but it's a good place to start. And, yeah, he gave me a deal on all of these, but super cool. Uh, you read it backwards, so it, normally we would read, you know, the opening so people you know left to right but in japan they read right to left right or they read you know yeah so anyway you open the back what you think is the back cover first and and how cool is that you got like the cast of characters and then you got you know the first volume and i wonder where the story starts yeah, it starts at the very beginning of Dragon Ball Z. Shocking, right? So I don't know if you can see that, but that's when the farmer, uh, discuss, when Raditz is, a say, an alien ship, is like landing in the field and the farmer discovers him. So yeah, this is like the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. And he gave, I bought the five volumes. So here's volume two, 
which, you know, Dragon Ball, I'm, yeah, it looks like this is Frieza Saga, so it looks like this first volume is probably just the Saiyan Saga, so like Raditz, Nappa, Vegeta, the original villains, and then second volume is Frieza Saga, that's got to be cool to see, oh man, no, it's got part of the Saiyan Saga in here, because it's, he's fighting Vegeta in grade 8 form, so... It's a little bit of the Saiyan Saga, but then it goes into, yeah, it goes into the Frieza Saga. Let me see if I can find Frieza somewhere. Hey, this is a good viewership up. <laughs> um, where's Frieza? There he is. Frieza with Zarbon and Dodoria. So yeah, cool volume two. Volume three. Uh, what do we, this looks like it's, so maybe it's like just when they first arrive on Namek because it's got the Ginyu Force on the back. So this is probably just a continuation of the Frieza Saga. Yeah, this is like Raccoon, so you've got the, you know, Ginyu Force. And then at the end, I'm sure you've got, yeah, looks like Frieza in his second stage. Yeah, you got like Piccolo fighting Frieza in his second stage, so... Still a little bit of the Frieza Saga, Volume 4. Looks like the end of the Frieza Saga. So yeah, you got him. Oh, we switched to color at the end of this one. Interesting. Did the manga switch to color? The, hmm. Interesting. But you've got, yeah, you've got Goku fighting Frieza. And at the end, you've got color, which I don't remember. Oh, and it looks like it's previewing the androids. So you got Dr. Giro and Android 19. Huh. Interesting. Because he said this goes through the Frieza saga. Maybe it doesn't go through the, I mean, he said it goes through the Cell saga. Yeah, this doesn't go through... Yeah, well, it, it does. Start... Okay. So it's partway through the Cell Saga. Not the whole Cell Saga. I thought it went through the whole Cell Saga. I'll have to get Volume 6 and the other volumes. But here's Volume 5. Go, Goku and Super Saiyan. And then the back. So you got Android 16 there. And, yeah. You start off with... Looks like Dr. Giro and Android 19 fighting... The Z fighters, and then I'm sure Cell comes in at some point. Well, as well as Android 17 and 18. Yep, here's here's the other androids. Here's 17 and 18's in there. Kami. Oh, here's yeah, and then here's Cell. So yeah, real cool books. I'll be definitely reading all those stories. I think it's really, you know, awesome to read not just American comic books, but you know, Japanese comic books because those stories are really popular and have stood the test of time as well. I say the test of time. These came out, you know, back when I was a kid. Well, a little bit before, but <laughs> super cool to own those. Really an interesting, you know, uh, comic book related purchase because I've never seen those kind of books before, but. Here is the traditional comic books I bought. Uh, this is going to be Gold Key 402. This is Walt Disney's Warped and the Wizard. This is based on the stories from Sword of the Stone. So Sword of the Stone, one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. Very underrated. You got Merlin. Uh, you got Archimedes. You got, obviously, Arthur. It's the story of the Knights of the Round Table, how Arthur, you know, pulls the sword out of the stone. Shocking. This is a... You know, I would say like a, maybe a 4-0, if I were to guess. You know, we got, we got a lot of spine stress, but I don't see any chunks missing. A little bit of staining, a little bit of staining here on the edge. You can see it by Merlin right, right there. Um, a little dirt, but, you know, this is a... 
A little dirt up there. This is a copy to read with my kids, so yeah. Not worried about it being like of graded quality. This is Dell Comics 446. This is Walt Disney's Captain Hook and Peter Pan. I got this because the cover is amazing to me. <laughs> I love and my girls. Captain Hook and Peter Pan are like some of their favorite characters. So uh, the girls immediately just love this. But the, I'm going to take this out of this. I should have just done that to begin with. So, yeah. Colors on this I thought just really popped. The yellow especially, just super vibrant, super bright yellow. And really good condition obviously you've got this like grease pencil up here but you know a little bit of you know, a little crease up here some issues up at the top you know we got a crease down here as well but you know i think a strong copy for sure just especially because of the color strike the colors remaining so vibrant on books you know as old as they as these are you know this is a 10 center so yeah, it's super cool that, that that basically looks like it's you know hasn't faded at all. Here's Dell Comics 668. This is Walt Disney's Dumbo. So I am a huge Disney comic fan, Dis Disney fan in general, and I love movies, comics, the comics you know based on the Walt Disney animated movies. So I'm a sucker anytime I see them. I got these comics from Bedrock Comics, the one I showed that he had the Detective Comics 38. So I sh rifled through those through those short boxes he had. Uh, thanks, Ken, from Tasty Cat. He really shouted out. He's like, you got to go look at Bedrock Comics because he knows I like Disney books. So thanks for the assist on that, Ken. Really appreciated it. Because, yeah, I did pick up books from Bedrock, these Disney books. Uh, Dumbo, I think, again, for his, the age, strong presenting copy. Anytime you have old books like this, you're going to have, you know, some wear on the spine, some spine ticks creases because it was red it was loved we got the big uh big oh, not a big issue but there's some fading in that in that lower corner here um we got a little bit of a little bit of something up here as far as issue but very strong there's a little crease through the d and dell you see right there but oh Looks like maybe like an what is this an attempted hole punch? I don't know if you can see that. It feels a little raised too. Looks like maybe it was attempted. You know, someone pressed down on the hole punch, but like didn't actually hole punch it. Can you see that? Right, right there in the ear. Yeah, right there. Never seen that before, but you know, not surprised. Uh, hole punches are not super uncommon with, with books of that age. And then I got a Dell Giant number one, Walt Disney's Lady and the Tramp. So a giant just means lots more stories, so uh, or a thicker volume, I should say, or a thicker book, because it does have more stories. So I don't know if you if you'll be able to see the difference in size between the two books see the giant is obviously much much thicker because it's got a lot more stories but yeah my one of my daughters loves puppies loves dogs and so waiting the tramp immediately she was like oh yeah i want that i want to want to read it and we'll have a lot of fun there's a little teeny tiny little piece in the corner missing i don't know if you can a little teeny tiny piece out of the corner a uh, little staining right between Lady and the Tramp. A uh, little bit of a crunched corner here. But, yeah, again, it's very strong presenting copy. These are all at least, I would say, you know, mid-grade for sure. All these books, but, yeah, very great book. Thanks, Bedrock, for, for these huge key well not huge key but big disney uh movie books i really like picking them up when i can they had tons of disney books and of course tons of all kinds of different books but those are the ones i picked up now you might be asking morgan where's the big grail book you were at heroes con you mentioned all these amazing golden age books these huge grail pieces where is it well 
I'm going to talk to you about the one that got away. <laughs> I actually saw uh, quite a few books that I was interested in, but one of them in particular I really would was <clears throat> really wished I could have gotten there on, and that was Wonder Woman number six. Now I have a copy of this book. It is the very first Cheetah, and mine is a conserved 3.5. The conservation was because two of the pages were missing, and I had them professionally reattached to the book, so it wasn't incomplete and a green label. So now I have a gray conserved 3.5 label on this book. This is a massive golden age grail book. There's like less than 40 of these. No, there's less than 100 of these. I was thinking of Sensation Comics 6. That's less than 50 of those. But there's like easily less than 100 of these books on the census. And I uh, always like to have my golden age books at least a 4.0. And if I can get them a blue label, I try to. But being a 3.5, yeah, this is just slightly below. Uh, I did send this book into CGC hoping that with, you know, I got it clean and pressed and hoping that it would grade bump because Matt Nelson told me that it was, you know, likely to bump to at least, uh, you know, 4.5, possibly 5.0. If you want to hear about that story and the amazing experience that was, you can check out my videos on that. But um, yeah, so I, I've been looking to upgrade this copy ever since I got it back from CGC. Uh, a while ago and they had a 6.0 a 6.0 off-white pages copy so I also like at least off-white or better pages on my golden age books so it was exactly what I wanted 6.0 off-white pages we just couldn't get there because of the price I was an underbidder on a copy about you know a year ago so in June of 2023 and the book went for like 6300 and I was the underbidder at 61 or 62, something like that. Like I was topping out 6,000 and I just threw in the next bid because I always do that just because I don't want to miss it for like a hundred bucks. But I ended up being the underbidder on that book. So that was the last known sale and that was a 6.0 as well. So I couldn't justify, especially in the last year paying, because he was asking 10 for it, $10,000. I couldn't justify going that high. I asked him if he had wiggle room. He told me, you know, he was very transparent, said he paid like $7,700 for the book, so he couldn't come close to $6,300. And I couldn't, I couldn't justify as much as I would have wanted to. I mean, that's just so much more than the underbid that I was. And just, I mean, these, I, at the end of the day, I don't need a 6.0. I do, I do need a, I could live with a 4.0 or better. So I'm going to be patient. I'm not going to, I'm not going to overpay for the book, even though these are rare. I will see one again, I'm sure. And hopefully I can get it for closer to fair market value. And I understand the dealers, they got to make money too, right? So I understand it. He even admitted, yeah, I overpaid for it. But so I just couldn't come to price with him on that. But that was the main book that I saw that I really wanted to go after at the con. And I just couldn't make it happen for price wise. The other couple books I saw was a Detective Comics 66. That's the first two phase. It was in a 1.8. And he was asking, I think, 77 or 7800 for it that just wasn't in the grade that i was looking for and then i saw uh detective comics 225 which is the first martian manhunter i saw a couple of those but uh i that's not a book that's high on my priority list i want one of those eventually so i didn't i just didn't feel the need to go out and purchase one of those uh so ended up not pulling a, the trigger on a on a grail or a big book unfortunately but will I be back and hopefully do it next year? Absolutely. I would. So Heroes Con, absolutely recommend it. Anyone who hasn't been or even to those who have been, you know, let me know in the comments what, what have your experiences been like at Heroes Con. I just absolutely loved it. Even though I didn't get a grail piece, I got comic books. I got Cruel Treasury, basically, you know, collections of manga. I got non-comic book, you know, little Lego figures. I got shirts and I met... So many cool people and it's had a, such a blast on my birthday. I don't think there's a better way to spend your birthday than Heroes Con. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you like content like this, especially if you like me talking about comic book conventions because I haven't done that before. So make sure to subscribe and comment down below what you thought of this new type of video. But thanks so much for watching and catch me on this next video.